So welcome everyone again to the heart of Chicago, where the winds of innovation blow. Now let's learn about a tale of cloud native, open source, and global communities in tow. So Chicago is known for its pizza. It's so deep and fine, and just like open source, it's a collective design. From the source of ideas to the code that we write in Cloud Native's kitchen, it's all done right. And have you ever wondered why the Cloud Native projects love the deep dish pizza so much? Because they both stack layers of cheesy code, of course. And just like the mozzarella that's ooey and gooey, our Cloud Native solutions are always so groovy. The Chicago hot dog, it's a culinary delight with the mustard, relish, and that neon green light. And now why did the hot dog join the Cloud Native spree? To add a no ketchup taint, because that's just not right, you see. And have you ever wondered why the Chicago skyscrapers make such great Cloud Native enthusiasts? Because they're experts at high availability and scaling up to new heights. Now with the global community, together we'll rise, and from Chicago's skyline, we'll aim for the skies. So from the windy shores of Lake Michigan's grace, let's now talk about some of the challenges we face and things that aren't a breeze for open source maintainers across the seven seas. From Mumbai streets to Tokyo's neon glow, Sao Paulo's vibes where the KCDs flow, cloud native and open source, in this global theme, we're growing together and we're chasing a shared dream. Maintainers work around the clock, that's the deal. In time zones worldwide, they're spinning the wheel. Pull requests and issues, they keep pouring in. And while some are sleeping, others begin. So it's a never-ending cycle, it's a worldwide flow. And in this open source realm, this is how the contributions grow. So shout out to the maintainers across the time divide. You are the backbone of open source. In you we confide. Time zone challenges, you're gonna conquer them with grace. In the cloud native world, you set the pace. Now communication's the game in this techie race, and when languages differ, it's like a digital maze. So let's break down the walls and find the solutions we need in this wonderful community where ideas all feed. Language barriers, we're gonna conquer them with grace. And in this global, in global teams, we're going to all find our place. Now, why did the Cloud Native developer visit the Chicago Bean to reflect on the community? It was quite the same. From the Field Museum to the Art Institute's grace, Cloud Native enthusiasts with a smile on our face, and Chicago's embrace where art and code convene, inclusion and accessibility from the Palais, painting a joyous scene. With that, Welcome me in joining our panelists with an applause. So we've got Divya Mohan from India, who's a Kubernetes 6 Docs Chair. <laughs> Divya Mohan from India, who's a Kubernetes 6 Docs Chair and a CNCF Ambassador. You want to learn more about WASM's magic and CNCF's allure, then she is your compass for sure. Akihiro Suda from Japan, who maintains the Container D and runs C Core ensuring that containers run smoothly now and ever more. Carolina Valencia from Brazil, who is a KCD organizer and a leader in the Kubernetes release team. You've got to thank her for continuing to make the project supreme. And finally, Destiny O'Connor, who's a chair of the CNCF Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group, who's been phenomenal in making sure it's known that tech is for everyone in every turn. Thank you, everyone, and let's talk to our panelists now. Let's have a seat, everyone. So uh, let's get started. So Carolina, starting with you, you had mentioned that KubeCon has had a tremendous impact in growing local communities in Latin America. That is so inspiring. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, after more Latin members are coming to KubeCon, this inspired to create a lot of new communities in, in the Latin cities, uh, and together with the KCD events. Uh, for example, we have in the last six months, we have nine new chapters created. 
and in total is 20 chapters that are active. And uh, this is very inspiring. And this year, the CNCF helped us uh, with the scholarship to the KCD organizers uh, for people that never had the opportunity to come to, to KubeCon. And for the first time, organizers from Brazil, Chile, uh, Colombia, Guatemala, and more are and, and here with us. And this is great because this is an opportunity to participate in a global event and give back to our local communities. I love that. And also, I love that with KubeCon, you're getting to be such a force multiplier and also inspire so many folks. Um, Destiny, so CNCFs enabled you to meet deaf and hard of hearing peers and allies from all around the world. Uh, so can you elaborate a little bit on how you got started in the community? Yeah, absolutely. So I started wanting to meet deaf and hard of hearing. There's a lot of people in the technology space, but I noticed that we faced a lot of challenges and limited access to accommodations. So during that time, I found CNCF, Deaf of Hard of Hearing Working Group. And really, it's my first time here at QCon. And my working group members, many of us are here, so that's been great. So thank you so much for CNCF scholarship opportunity to become, and it's been amazing to meet everyone here in person. That's wonderful. Thank you, Destiny. And the working group has also been doing phenomenal work in improving accessibility for the deaf and hard of hearing community. So congratulations on that. Yeah, this Thank is you. very inspiring. Uh, in the KCD Peru, we have members with hard hearing and speech impediments. And this makes me think, how can we be more supportive and create more awareness in our local communities? Yeah, I agree. Um, also, changing gears a little bit, uh, We've mentioned a lot about scholarships, so talking about scholarships, Divya, we were recently discussing about the financial struggles of folks getting started in the community. Yeah, so for a lot of folks getting started in open source, um, despite the scholarships and the support that's offered by various organizations, Specifically from India, it's still very much a pipe dream for folks to attend conferences like these. Um, that's because, um, as many of us in the audience can attest, um, getting visas is hard and it's super expensive. So um, a lot of folks who are actually contributors can't make it. And uh, honestly speaking, I think times are changing uh, with massive conferences like KubeCon uh, being held in India for the upcoming year in 2024. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I agree. Uh, in Latam also it's hard to get a visa. Together with the currency exchange, uh, it's very hard to travel to USA and Europe. And that's the reason that we are hoping that we will have a Q-Day Latam, that we can bring together all the countries in a big Woo. event. For all the people that not, not can, can travel to, to us. And can, can. I love that idea and I hope that it happens. Um, we've got one more exciting announcement to make related to that. So from KubeCon plus CloudNativeCon, based on the community feedback uh, in Paris in 2024, we're now going to announce KubeCon scholarship notifications way in advance, so eight whole weeks prior to the start of the conference date. This will allow uh, for more folks to attend and to help with visa applications. That's truly amazing news, honestly. But I think, uh, you know, going back to the financial struggles for a bit, um, I've also noticed as a docs maintainer that not a lot of folks who get started, uh, specifically, you know, early career uh, folks and students who try to get into open source, they don't have access to the uh, right kind of infrastructure in the name of laptops with decent specs. But um, it's been great to see their resilience as they rise up the contributor ranks and to actually ensure that going forward, um, future generations of contributors and maintainers are not really impacted by the same uh, set of struggles that they are actually impacted by. So it's been great to see that. Yeah, and in fact, uh, I think I recently saw that India is now the second largest contributor base to Kubernetes in the world. Yeah. <laughs> So 
So to add to that fun statistic, um, India along with China and Germany, which are three countries that don't have English as their native language, uh, they fe feature in the top five contributing countries to the entire CNCF ecosystem. So to be honest, when we are interacting with each other at such conferences or even during your SIG and TAG meetings, it's extremely essential to sort of not use technical jargons or acronyms while you know having those interactions because um, newer folks might not really be familiar with that. And uh, I think Akiro has some valuable insight in that regard. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, Japanese people are struggling with uh, this English issue as well. And at CubeCon and other international conferences, uh, it's sometimes uh, difficult to follow along in English when the presentation does not have slides or when the slides do not contain much information. And also my English accent is a challenge when attending uh, conferences or uh, synchronous meetings. Uh, sometimes I even fail to say salutation phrases uh, due to my accent issue. Yeah, to add on to what Akira just said, um, meetings in general are a really um, flamaxing problem uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, time zones outside the US and EU because um, it's hard for us to attend meetings and they are typically at a very unfriendly time for a lot of us. And honestly speaking, it leads to a lot of terrible work-life balance issues here. Yeah. I uh, agree, and for the time zone issue, uh, I want to uh, give a special shout out to Dabanam uh, Srinivas, who is also known as uh, Demus. Uh, he's a maintainer of uh, continuity in the Kubernetes, and he always uh, cares about uh, time zone minorities, such as me, uh, who finds it difficult to attend in uh, synchronous meetings, and uh, he always cares uh, about us, and try to uh, make sure that our opinions are uh, reflected through the community. So I want to uh, appreciate uh, Damanam Srinivas, Dimas. Yeah, uh, communication always <laughs> is hard for me. Like you can feel shy and hesitate before talk. It's not your natural language. But together with uh, acronyms and idioms, it's hard to understand without a context. Uh, so let's try to, I think in general, effective and inclusive communications is difficult in any language. Uh, so let's try to have more empathy between each other when we use the synchronous and asynchronous communication. I love that. I love that, I really love that. So I think we need to really remember that in a world full of diverse languages, kindness and empathy eventually end up becoming the universal language of connection. Uh, I'm also a huge, huge fan of async communication. For meetings, closed captioning is one way to tackle the issue, but Destiny, you called out that that's not enough. Absolutely, yeah, closed captioning is not enough. We really do need interpreters. Spoken language and closed captions are very different from ASL. It's way more visual. So CNCF has been amazing support and they've provided interpreters here for us today. They've been following us around to various sessions. And if you want to interact with us, feel free, please come say hi. If you've never interacted with a deaf person before, we'd be honored to be your first. Thank you so much, Destiny. And I think we need to remember that we need to make tech more inclusive and accessible, and also recognize that inclusivity starts at its core. Uh, this is also how we can grow community members from all around the world. Definitely, and uh, for growing the international community, uh, I want to uh, note that in Japan, uh, there are still not so many contributors to the uh, cognitive technologies, uh, despite the huge numbers of the users. And in Japan, uh, there were five workshops for uh, new contributors to Kubernetes in the last three years. 
and that helped a lot, uh, but uh, there's still uh, more to do to uh, grow the international contributor community. Yeah, and also improving accessibility will help us draw more senior and experienced folks into the community, and we desperately need them to sustain the future of our cloud native projects. So overall, let's reflect on how we can be more inclusive in this community and remember that true progress does not come only when we invite diverse voices to the table, but it co and comes when we ensure that they get a meaningful seat that helps shape technology that reflects the world that it serves. So thank you everyone, and here are also some breakout sessions that go into more detail about this topic that I highly recommend checking out. So thanks everyone, and have a wonderful conference. Yeah.